Welcome to Bidbid in Oman, where old men brandishing swords mingle happily with athletes from the top table of world cycling. No team buses with tinted windows to hide on here. Let's make do with some plastic chairs outside the Nassim Sabor restaurant and coffee shop and its very tempting aroma of incinerated chicken. In fact, this is what Tour de France start villages should be like. GCN put the idea to none other than Alberto Contador. It's a, a, a little bit different, no? Right, one quick shot of the peloton riding past the fellows with the swords, then it's enough of the tourist stuff. Here's what's on the agenda today. The stage rolls inland to a first intermediate sprint at 32 k's, then it loops back round through a feed at 83 k's, past Muscat, and then the sting in the tail. An afternoon of relatively benign rolling around, spoiled by some short and brutal climbs with a sprint thrown in for good measure. That's all backloaded before the finish at Al Bustan at 146 k's. Could it be a day for Mr. World Champ, Philippe Gilbert? Or perhaps the quiet Slovak assassin with the flamboyant victory celebrations? Yes, Peter Sagan. The answer to that question later on, but first let's explain this is not a repeat and it's not Groundhog Day. It is indeed Bobby Traxel of Champion System being joined by a rider from Team Japan again in a two-up break for a second day running. This time his partner was Tomohoro Kinoshita, an under 23 based in France. The pair jumped free after a manic start that saw IAM's Christoph Goddard wreck his shorts on someone's garden patio, more damage to pride than body by the looks of it. Traxel and Kinoshita had obviously agreed the Dutchman would take the sprints and they rolled through the first one without any dramas. Race leader Marcel Kittel would later nab third place. Not a great deal of urgency from the peloton, although Argos Shimano made sure the escape didn't gain more than five and a half minutes. Rolling through the feed resembled a Sunday club run, the speed a leisurely 38.7 k's an hour. That was for two hours. The front duo still had near to five minutes advantage with 45 kilometers remaining, but the pace suddenly shot up approaching the steep nasty bits we mentioned earlier and the pair were caught. Now at this point we could no longer safely film in race due to UCI regulations relating to in-race cars, especially given the technical nature of the last 25 k's and the bunch being blown apart. But we can report that Alberto Contador lit the fuse on the climb of Algisa around 6 k's from the end, and Vincenzo Nibali also showed his intentions, but the climbs are too short to distance this man. And with a fast downhill and a short uphill sprint to the finish, it was a foregone conclusion. Sagan's first win of the season, and it probably won't be his last. Nibali was fourth behind Tony Gallopan and Martin Elmiger, while Contador, Bradley Wiggins, Joachim Rodriguez and Cadell Evans all finished in the first big group just behind. Sagan is the new leader of the Tour of Oman, also the best young rider. A good job for Kittel, he took third at the first sprint, as that single point meant he at least retained the green points jersey just about. Oh, and no surprise, this man took a trip to the podium for the most aggressive rider jersey again. And guess what he'll do on Wednesday? You think you can go a third day in a row? I need. <laughs> I need to because uh, I need to have uh, at least uh, like uh, two sprints more. So I need to have maybe tomorrow. <laughs> So it looks like we have at least one certainty for stage three. For the rest, we'll have to wait and see, but a word of warning. This was the man who won at Wadi Daika last year, and we're not betting against a repeat. Phil Sheehan, GCN in Oman.